Okay, here we go. First thing I need to do, peel one carrot for each jar. I love this peeler because it goes both directions. So, peeling a carrot is as quick as turning your carrot around. Okay, so one carrot per jar. Then I add one potato to each jar as well. Oh, now because you're adding it straight into the jar, I don't think you need to soak it in water. And you don't even have to cook the stuff. It'll cook while it's in the cooker itself. And then when it gets ready to make it, well, I'll discuss that part later. But for right now, peel one potato. One potato at a time. This is not one that you can do uh, assembly line style where you do a whole bunch of them and then you go to the next step and you do a whole bunch of them and you go to the next step. These ones you really got to do just one at a time. Okay. Cut it in half. in half and then chunk it into bite sized pieces. That's all there is to it. Okay and then I just use my cutting board. I curl it up and I use that to put it down the chute of the funnel or actually in a pinch you could actually just stick the end of these because they're so flexible right in the can and use that as the funnel to get it in there if need be. Okay, sorry for the reflection, but this is my jar of chicken soup getting ready for me to add the broth in. These were the leftover soups that I had for dinner. Turned out I didn't have enough. So I use that as a base. I split that up evenly amongst my seven. And then there's the carrot and the potato. And then the layer of my pre-cooked chicken, okay, which I had already done up um, a couple of days ago and left in the refrigerator because I'm going to debone that and then just can't up quart size of shredded's because my family loves chicken salad and we go through too many of those cans that you can buy in the store, so I'm going to can up quart size. Okay, so that's my shredded chicken. And then on top of that, you'll see this gel. Okay, let me tilt this a little. All right, this is what happened with the broth from the chicken that I had cooked the chicken in. I had separated it out, put it inside of containers. Then I took it, uh, uh, took the container that I had that gel in skimmed off the fat. There was quite a bit of fat. Um, I just throw my fat away. I haven't found a use for it yet. But took and uh, put my gel in there. And then I have extra broth from the chicken soup. And I'm going to put that in. That should take and melt this down, which will concentrate the flavors in this jar. I should not need to add any more chicken bro uh, salt to it. I will drop in one bouillon cube for this entire thing. And then that will take and be the salt for this and add extra strength to this so that when I get ready to cook it, I just add this plus another jar of water and that'll be the soup for my family. Okay? Okay. Now, as you can see, I've got my liquid in there. Now, if you do this slow enough, I have found that if you fill this slow enough, You'll be able to hear the gurgling as it's going down through. You'll be able to hear the gurgling as it's going down through the items. Okay. Now, also, if you notice that when you take this out, all right, 
even though it's like a lot narrower than the wide mouth jars, you're always going to get this little bit of drippy and fatty on the end, which means that you can never trust that the seal isn't done up. All right, now I already burped this so that I could put that funnel back in to show you how. Okay, and you can see that that gel has melted from the hot liquid and worked its way down. Now, this is a tip that I got from the ball online. I don't remember seeing it online. In this cup, I've got just plain straight vinegar and a paper towel. All right, rub it along this edge. All right, the vinegar cuts through the grease and the fat better than the water will. All right, and it doesn't take a lot. It doesn't take a lot of rubbing. All right, and you just want to get in here. I usually get a little bit down on the inside of the lip just so that I can make sure that it's not going to creep up too bad. And I get the outside of the ring simply because that funnel will like to drip. And sometimes I will do the shoulders, which is kind of funny because as you're cooking these in your pressure steamer, it is not it is not unusual for the the um the, the liquid on the inside to come out with the air as it's pressure steaming. It's perfectly normal from what I've been told. Alright, so that's that. Then Cool Nifty One. I just got these this year. I've been canning for a long time without one. Um, my husband taught me how to can tomatoes when we first got married some 23 years ago. So, all right, there's my leftover soup for dinner. Okay. Now, when I do this, I notice my water is steaming. That steam is coming from my water. All right, you don't want to boil these. It used to be they wanted you to boil them, but they were finding people were melting this rubber. Okay, you want to just get them soft. You see how you can, you don't really have to push down hard. You just, you can kind of leave an indent. So it's just soft enough. And then you want to center this on. Oh. Grab your ring. I'm kind of doing this blind man's bluff style with my iPad. So. Alright, you want to tighten the ring until you start feeling the resistance. And then, oh, there's really no way to do this. Okay, and then what I would do is I would tighten it just a little bit more. Or what you can do, which I found also works, is if you tighten it, then back it back up about a quarter of an inch. That's usually as tight as you need to have it. And read your manual, all right, for your pressure cooker and arrange them. Remember, your cans cannot touch the wall and they should not touch each other. All right, it looks like those two are close, but really there's some space in between there. All right, and I got room one, one more for in there. My particular one does seven at a time. Okay, that's it.